Another parable put he forth to them, saying, this is the second parable, he's going to give them seven. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Everyone say good seed. Good seed. Where did he sow good seed? Where did he sow good seed? In his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. So the good seed then is wheat. He doesn't tell us in the beginning that it's wheat, but he tells us then that the good seed is wheat and went his way. Now, this is apparent that we have one field and two sowers. The person that sows the tares doesn't have a field. So he's looking for a field to sow his rubbish. Doesn't have a field, so he's looking for someone that has prepared the ground and uh, sows the seed. And look what he does. He went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, did not you sow good seed in your field? From whence then does it have tares? When, from whence does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. Say that. An enemy has done this. Say that again. An enemy has done this. And the servant said to him, Will you then have us go and gather them up? He said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together. Say that. Say that again. Until the harvest and in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tares. First the tares. Gather you together first the tares. Bind them in bundles. Bind them how? Bind them how? And get them ready to be burnt. But gather you the wheat into the barn. Father, we thank you for your blessing here tonight. We thank you for your anointing in Jesus' name. It is a life principle that when good is sown, evil is present. Uh, it is a principle that when good is sown, tares are sown. It's wheat and tares. Now, what generally happens in a service like this, demonic activity is very high in any service. We know that because of the preceding parable that Jesus told, in the sower that sows the seed, he said the first ground, he said the seed is sown on the wayside. And he said the birds of the air come and steal that word from people's ears. So while the word is being preached, there's, there's activity, demonic activity, that's on a very high level. At least one-fourth of the service is committed to and dedicated to uh, demonic activity taking what you could have in your spirit. At least 25% of activity here is demonic activity taking word from us. And the reason for that in the next parable, he explains it. He says because people fall asleep. And we're not talking about physically sleeping, that too. We're talking about sleeping at an opportunity when a potential revelation could be sown into your spirit. Anytime you come into the presence of God, your spirit potentially opens to receive something from God. The Bible tells us that the word of God is the incorruptible seed. That when it is sown in your heart, that it will produce a result. 
So just as a synopsis for this service and in general for a season, there are seasons when your spirit opens to receive something from God. And at the opening of your spirit to receive something from God, God is going to sow a seed, a nugget into your spirit. Now, that word may not necessarily come into full manifestation the next morning. It may, but not necessarily so. The word may come into full manifestation in time. So you could receive a word this evening that would come into manifestation maybe 10 years from now. But here's the problem, is that between now and 10 years, people tend to fall asleep. And what happens is, while your spirit is still open, someone or something can sow a seed, which is a tear, to try to cancel out the good that God is doing in your life. Yeah. Is everybody with me here? Yeah. So the Apostle Paul was, was, was right and expedient in his presentation when he states, when I would do good, that's my intention, evil shows up at the same time. When I want to do something that's right, wrong shows up at the same time. When light tries to shine forth, darkness manifests at the same time. When you rise up with an idea, there's always something to snuff out the idea. The minute you make an attempt to move forward, there's always a vahabiki to pull you back just a little bit. But the devil is a liar because, because when the word of God is sown in your spirit, it is the incorruptible word of God. Someone say, in the name of Jesus, the word sown in my spirit will produce fruit. Now clap your hands if you can. That was weak, amen. Clap your hands like you want to. Oh, come on, Holy Ghost. So let's give you a couple of case studies. Give you a couple of case studies. God sows a seed into the world, and, and a tear is sown the same time that seed is sown. And so you have a cane who's a tear, and you have an Abel who is wheat. And if we're not careful, if we don't manage it correctly, the tears can suck the life out of the wheat. And so anytime you are, you are an aspirant to do something significant, not just for God, for your life, you have to be aware, you have to be cognizant at all times that there's something that's, that's anti your progression. There's something that is determined to destroy your anointing. And so when Jesus is born, there's also Herod's son that becomes Herod Antipas, the fox that Jesus called him. So Jesus is born the king of the world. Herod Tetrarch is born the, the persecutor and the slayer of John the Baptist. So, so when Jesus is born, who's sleeping? The religious world falls asleep. Instead of receiving Jesus as the savior into the world, they fall asleep and allow Herod the, the terrible to have his seed who becomes Herod the Tetrarch who, who arrests John the Baptist and has his head taken off because he was lecherous and he had his uh, brother's wife and daughter staying in the house. And it's this Herod that is the one that's going to be part of the persecutor of what comes to be the church. And so instead of the religious body being awake to receive the, the, the wheat, Jesus, the wheat, they allow a tear to be sown. And what Herod does, he, 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 um, he sort of like uh, builds a disguise around, around the sowing of the tear. And, and, and the way he does it, he starts killing babies in Bethlehem and forces the wheat, Jesus, to Egypt. And so while Jesus is in Egypt, in Egypt for four years, Herod, his son, the wheat, is in the soil of what was rightfully Jesus' soil. And when Jesus comes back after Herod dies, Herod's job is done because his son is in his place and he's already claimed the ground that belongs to the wheat. 
And so Jesus now has to be raised, not in Jerusalem. He's got to go to Nazareth where nobody knows him. And he's not going to have access to the doctors of the law. So, so tears are very dangerous in a person's life. And, and, and what happens is at the time of harvest, sisters and brothers, at the time of harvest, both of them are going to be harvested at the same time. Herod and Jesus. They're both going to be cut down at the same time. But only one comes out of the grave. Only one is resurrected from the grave. One goes to the right hand of the Father. The other is burning in hell. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. I come against every tear and every spirit trying to inhibit and destroy what's in your life. The spirit of poverty will not take over in the spirit of prosperity. The devil will not steal your money. He will not take your joy. He will not snuff out what God has intended for your life. I command the wheat to grow in your life. Come on, Holy Ghost! So we have, we have a Rebecca, just a beautiful woman. Uh, 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 and I'm kind of like a little bit interested here because we, we're going to have a little bit of an arranged uh, marriage here. And, uh, and so Eliezer, the servant of Abraham, is, is going to go and find a, a wife for, for Abraham's son. The brother's 40 years old and he's not showing any spark. And so they organize a little munyai there to, to help organize. Amen. I was getting a little bit worried about dream, but I think he's organizing. Amen. <laughs> Please forgive me, Tari. Amen. I just, I couldn't resist. Amen. But if he wasn't, we were going to send Kenny Mutuswa to go find something. <laughs> that's going to cost me. Oh my God, that's going to cost me. Amen. Your mother made me say it, Dreen. Amen. And TJ's walking around because he wants me to say something about him. Amen. <laughs> and so he goes and he finds this girl at a well because that's the prerequisite. He said, if you want me to find a wife for the destiny of, of Abraham, through whom all the nations of the world are going to be blessed, she has to be the right girl. In other words, she has to be the right soil. The right field. Because Isaac is going to sow a seed through which the Messiah will come. And the seed has to be sown in the right field or in the right seed. So he then creates a condition for the field. And Rebecca shows up. And if you read 24 of Genesis, you'll see all the prerequisites and conditions of what it takes to be soil for the bride of Christ. She comes home and meets Isaac, but, but for Almost 20 years, they get married when Isaac is 40. And when Isaac is 60, still nothing's happening. Because her soil can't receive the seed. And so the Bible says Isaac begins to pray in 25 of Genesis. And he entreats the Lord for his wife, Rebecca. And the scripture says, and the Lord was entreated. And when she got pregnant, she starts feeling this war going on inside of her belly. Now, she's never been pregnant before. And, and so... But she knows that this is not normal because it's like there's a whole team down there kicking and playing. This is not like one baby. This is like something happening down there. And so she goes to the Lord and says to him, what's happening down here? In, what's happening in my field? What's growing in my field? Because she knows there's something growing. She knows that she is designed to produce the Messiah. And so she's going to inquire of the Lord what's growing in her field. And the Lord comes to her and says, there are two nations that are growing inside of you that are so opposite to one another. The older one will serve the younger one. The younger one is the wheat. The older one is the tear. They're going to grow together. They'll be born on the same day. They're eating nutrients from the same field. When you eat something, it's going and growing both of them. And he said, the wrestling match is on right here. The entire history of humanity is a fight. We're wrestling with all kinds of things. We're wrestling with ourselves. You're wrestling with your mind. I'm wrestling, going to be 60 years old, wondering if I've been a success or meaningful. you wrestling to find a job. Someone's wrestling because they married. Someone else is wrestling because they married. Someone's wrestling because they want a baby. Someone's wrestling because they got too many babies. So it's constantly a wrestling match, fight after fight. 
But in your wrestling match, you have to know what is wheat and what is tares. Because they look the same, they act the same, they behave the same. And the only time you're going to tell the difference is when it's time to produce fruit. Who the real person is. And so today when Francis was leading in prayer, I was praying with him, but I was watching. And I saw certain people who, who would not open their mouths to pray. And I thought, that individual is not wheat. That individual is a tear. Looks like the plant, acts like the plant. But, but now when it's time for manifestation, you can see it in their language, in their body language, in their commitment. You can see it in their eyes. And if you've been around church for a long time, you can look and see who's genuine and who's not without being judgmental. You just have to look and you can see the tears amongst the wheat. And the tares want to take our wheat girls. Now we together. Let me close with this. Let me close with this. There comes a time in history of Israel when, when the spirit of the nation is opening. And when the spirit of the nation begins to open, right in that season, right in that season, you have Eli with two crazy sons, Phineas and Hophni. And, and you've, got, you've got a Hannah who is praying to have a baby. And, and her prayer is so intense. And it's God that's making her pray that way. Her adversity is, is, is not that she doesn't have a baby. Her adversity is the temperament of the Holy Spirit to bring something to pass in Israel. Because God is looking for a prophet who will rise up against all of the fallacy and all of the, the, the foolishness of Phineas and Hophni. And they're sowing wild oats and wild seeds all over Israel. And so it's going to take a Hannah now to, to produce a Samuel. But God has to make sure, sisters and brothers, that her field is right. And so Hannah is going to go to the temple or to Shiloh, the tabernacle, for seven years in a row. Seven years, one after the other. And she's praying hard. Well, what's she doing? She's plowing her field. She doesn't know that she's plowing her field. She's plowing her field. Because what she is about to receive is not just seed from Elkaniah to produce a son. She's about to receive a prophetic expression that's going to anoint kings. And so her feet, but God doesn't tell her that. She has to feel the prompting of God. Her spirit is opening to receive. She has to feel the prompting of God. And if you are a Christian and if you've been in anointing, you come to a Sunday night service like this, you can tell anointing. You can feel that something was to land on you. You know that something was to sit on you. You know that God is plowing you to put something that you've never had before. And when that begins to happen, open your spirit to receive from God, but also know that an enemy is watching. Oh, because when your spirit is being sown, something evil is trying to get in there and put something there as well. Clap your hands if you can. And so as Israel's spirit begins to open in the season of kings, the people say, we want a king. And Samuel is a little perturbed because he now thinks that the people have walked away from God. But God knows it is the season for kings because prophets come first and then kings follow. It's the prophet that anoints the kings. So when the people desire a king now, they look for tares and not wheat. And they find Saul from the land of Kish. His head and shoulders above the people. He looks like a king, walks like a king. But if you look at his lifestyle, it's the lifestyle of tares. And the people are not patient to wait on the Lord. And I heard the scripture say, they that wait upon the Lord will be of good courage because right in the same vicinity where Saul was chosen from, the eighth son of Jesse was put in the backside of a Bethlehem wilderness looking at a handful of sheep. And so when they, ex when they lifted up Saul, 
they lifted up the, 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 the tag in the kingdom of God. And Saul began to manifest all the traits of a tear. And after a few years, people began to see that this man is not an authentic king. And in chapter number 16 of 2nd 1 Samuel, the Lord said to Samuel, Saul has ticked me off. He's going in the opposite direction of what I intended for this nation. He said, go to Jesse's house and find one of his sons anoint him as king and so for a short while Saul is king but God's spirit is not with him and David is also king both kings growing together the tares growing quicker than the, than the wheat the tares expressing itself more than the wheat and so God arranges for David to come into the palace and for a short while, you see the demon driving Saul and the spirit lifting David. It's David's praise and worship that moves away the devil from Saul. But it's Saul who's trying to kill David. And it's Saul giving his daughter to David to try to produce this monogenic cross genetic freak between Saul and David. And God's going to close Michelle's womb because God will not allow wheat and tares to hook up. Can you hear what I'm saying? And so to keep them away, God allows persecution. So instead of the wheat growing, the wheat is on the run. David's running through the wilderness and the tares are persecuting them. But sisters and brothers, one day... The tares will be defeated. And someday the wheat will rise. And the signs of that will be shown on the battlefield. So when the battle gets tough, the wheat will always be stronger. When the battle is raging, the wheat will always be able to make bread. When the battle becomes hard, the wheat will take down the giant. So two kings standing in a place of battle. A small king who is not yet on the throne, but he's a shepherd boy. And the real king who has outgrown David because he's a weed growing quickly. And Goliath shows up. Now God's going to show the nation, you've chosen a tear, but I've given you wheat. The tear is going to hide behind the stone. The wheat is going to run towards the giant. The tear has a weapon that he won't use. The wheat will find any weapon to take down the giant. The tear will curse God. The wheat will bless God. The tear will look at the giant and his mudolos will hit together. But the tear will rise up in power and say, This is my day to show off my victory. So I don't care how strong, I don't care how strong the devil might be raging. I don't care how the trial might be running towards you. God sent me to tell you, kill that giant. Kill that enemy. When the enemy comes in like a flood, use your weapon. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal too loud, but mighty through God. I am wheat for Zimbabwe. I am wheat for my nation. I am wheat for my future. I am wheat for my destiny. And I refuse to sleep on the job. What devil? What curse? What power? can take me down. The tears have got to go as the wheat begins to rise. Clap your hands for the wheat. Give three people a high five and tell them I'm wheat. I'm wheat.
So protect your heart. Protect your relationships. Protect your gift. Protect your anointing. Don't let strange people into your space because the devil will sow tears in your life. Don't marry the wrong woman. You'd better not marry the wrong man. Take your time. Choose right and choose well. Because it's just do us part. When you have two series of wheat dwelling together, you can make something. But you can't have wheat and tares cohabit. The devil is a liar. Ask God to bless you. Ask him. Say, bless me with wheat. Everybody stand. Let's pray. Stand. Let's pray. On the day of Pentecost when the church was born, that same day, the devil sowed a false church. The same day. The very same day. Over here, the Holy Spirit is being poured out. People are receiving the Holy Spirit. And the power of God is falling. And across town, a bunch of folks started their own apostate church. The same day. The, the devil didn't even wait for the next day. The same day. Zimbabwe was born on the 18th of April, 1980. The same day that nation was born was the same day enemies against a new nation was raised to make sure the nation does not succeed. Same day. When you were born as a person, the day you were born, you were given a guardian angel to take you all the way through life. When you arrived the same day, a destructive demon was assigned to your life to take you to hell. Same day. Didn't wait for the next day, the same day. The day this church was born, the day this church came into being, the same day its enemies were sown, some right in the church that we were raising up. And it's amazing how when, when one would intend to do good, that evil can manifest. Not everybody that's smiling at you is for you. And so I pray for every person in this room that the true wheat, the true wheat, the true wheat of the word of God would come into manifestation. Wheat takes its time to grow. It takes its time to grow. I pray that the true wheat would manifest. I was reading from a journal. An archaeologist discovered something in Egypt a year and a half ago. And in that, in that tomb, in that tomb, they discovered seeds of wheat from Egypt that were over 4,500 years old. And they took some of those seeds and put them in the ground. And within days, sprouted, here comes the wheat. It had been sleeping for 4,000, over 4,000 years because in its genetic structure, it cannot die. Cannot die. But tears have a lifespan where they disintegrate because they can't live long. I pray that the destiny that God has sown in your spirit would come to fullness. It doesn't matter if the tears are choking you, Jonas, and squeezing the life out of you. The wheat will survive. And God allows them to grow together. Tell somebody it's growing together. I don't understand why our son Bernie is going through so much hell. I just, I can't understand it. We prayed, we fasted, we believed. And, and every time we think he's getting better, he slips back. And I said to him in, in the car, I said, Bernie, it is not fair that you should be going through this. It's not fair that a person should be going through this. But he's growing right there in the house. The bishop, the bishop's wife, and the challenge. It's right there. 
and speaks to us every day. Growing together. The miracle and the problem together. He's a miracle and a problem at the same time. Growing together. Your testimony that you've tried to raise up and protect right next to it is a tear that's trying to violate your testimony right there. And there's nothing you can do about it. They're growing together. But when harvest day comes. Sharama Samba. Come in, baby. It's coming. It's coming. You say you're a doctor. You say you're a surgeon. We believe you. But the true test is when something's on that table, can you fix it? The test is in the doing. Because the charlatan won't know what to do. The real doctor, by instinct and by training, will fix something that's not even in a textbook. Are we together? You say you're a lawyer. I believe you. But let's see you in a courtroom having a tough time in a case that's complicated. Let's see. Are we together? You say you can lead a country. Yeah, let's see. You say you can. The test is in, can you do it? Can you fix the city as mayor? You say you are a pastor. Well, let's see what you can raise. Let's see what you can raise. You say you can drive a car. Let's see you in, an, in, in a difficult circumstance when you are a truck gliding and sliding in your lane towards you. Let's see if you can get out of trouble. You say you can drive. You say you got a driver's license to prove it. Let's see if the wheat is really in you. Hopefully you won't have to rest in peace. I think I made my point. Raise your hands. Father, we command your blessing in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your grace. In the name of Jesus.